least the pressure's on me. It's very difficult under continuous pressure to make these very precise distinctions. Oh, what you're saying, I don't know what you're on now. Well, you said you simply drove a van. Right, after Harry Jones and this Matt Tucker had pulled the job, they drove to you, parked in a back street, and then you drove them home, as it were. As it was. That's as it was. Well, you've got to convince me, Jack. Are you saying that's all you did on the second Tucker job? Uh, where was it? Millen Hall. Are you sure? There was no wages snatch in Millen Hall. I didn't say it were a wages snatch. It was another some post office job. Only I didn't know what the job was till after. From Tucker and who else? Well, Macy was on that one. Brian Macy? Brian Macy. Now there's one we'd really like. I'd like not to, sir, but I have to leave you. I'll see you later. Tucker brought him. Right, let's tick off this list. Uh, taxes are all checked. Car hire. Yes, ma'am. Ambulance service. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hospitals. Yes, ma'am. Bus shelters. Yes, ma'am. Park. Yes, ma'am. Public library. Yes, ma'am. And all immediate neighbours. Yes, ma'am. Me and Arthur. I've been down four people street and Norton Lane. Knocked on all doors. No sign of her, ma'am. Oh, we've got four men such in the area around the canal, just in case. How many more can we muster? Two more immediately, ma'am. Right. With Daisy Herrick's house in Fourfield Street as the centre of a quarter square mile block, put two into this centre block and then one to each of the four outer blocks, roughly bounded from here to here and Deer Park Road to Ranelagh Lane. Right, ma'am. Now then, this means a thorough search of all gardens, front and back, all waste ground, disused or unoccupied buildings, even unlikely ones. I'll leave you to sort out who goes where, Joseph. Right, ma'am. Now, come on, lads. We must find her. OK, my man. Okay. Gallagher. Sons. I want you to take this rambling way in. Jim? Sir? Apparently, you've got 15 men looking for old Daisy. I can't get my hands on any more at the moment. Now, look, I've got this old fella in the cells. Now, he's in a bit of a state. I think we fit him at the exact moment of a mental breakdown. Now, I need some more men. I need people to go over to Division to check files, to get out on the street to check some up-to-date addresses for some of these villains. Now, I need some of your 15. I'm sorry, sir. You've got Jack Lord safely in the cells he'll keep. Daisy might be out somewhere in this cold, and if she is, we have to find her before she dies. Thank you, Jean. So, you started talking about Alf Harrison. Harrison? I'm afraid I have to keep coming back to you, Mr. Simmons. Oh, don't apologise, lass. <clears throat> You're more than welcome here. We're all trying for the same thing, find Daisy. How's Elsie? Oh, I did convince her to take one at Doctor's Relaxifiers. She's in bed upstairs. I mean, this is taking a lot out of her. We're none of us young. Oh, I've sent a message to tell her husband she'll be here for a while. It's good she's getting some rest. I came to ask you, Mr. Simmons, if you happen to know if Daisy ever lived in any other house in Hartley. Don't you know it, lass? She's been in this house all her life. And she's been talking about that lately, too. You know, about growing up here and her younger days and her, her mother widowed. And then the one boyfriend in her life, when she was 16. Merchant sailor he was, name of Albert. One great passion. It only lasted six months and then his ship was sunk by the Germans. That's what's been full in her mind for the last few weeks. I see. Oh, and I was just going to go down road to phone you. I've noticed something else a touch odd. Oh, yeah? The plants. Daisy's plants. Well, she loved them and talked to them, but, uh, well, I always water the top ones. Some of them are a bit awkward to get at. Yeah? Once a week, like it would be today or tomorrow for watering, but I noticed they're all, all of them, nicely wet. So she must have soaked them yesterday. And that's first time in years. So she did two things unusual. She watered her plants and she washed her dishes. And then went. Almost as if she was making sure everything was right because she was going away. I'm afraid it looks like it. And she left her wheelchair and there were no sounds of a car arriving, so she's probably local. Try to think, Mr Simmons, of anything she said lately about any place in the vicinity. Ah, lass, I will do. And all we can do is get on with looking for her. I hope you don't mind us being in here, Jean. The CID room has six rather large sergeants in it. You got enough men? No, but we'll struggle on. There's been a development with Jack Lord. 
Oh, yeah. Mm. Parrish got him to the point where he started talking about a sub-post office job, Millenhall. £18,000, 3rd of July last year. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord has tucked up three more names with the job, all known. Tucker, Macy, Alf Harrison. That's quite a team. Yes, but one of them isn't on. Alf Harrison was in Parkhurst on the 3rd of July. He wasn't released until September last. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Any chance he's completely having you on? No, I don't think so. It's clear that he has driven for the gangs, and I think he was on the Liverpool job and the other jobs. He's given us lots of details on those. No, I think it's more a question of the uh, reliability of his memory, that's all. It had better be. Otherwise, it's a few red faces. We don't really need remarks like that, Jean. Then I'll clear out of your way before I make any more. I'm just taking a quick lunch at home. I'll be back in half an hour. Have a nice lunch, Jean. Half an hour. Nothing elaborate, Tom. I've got to get back on this search. Uh, just omelette au jambon, dear. Why don't you call it what it is? I'm an ex. You've no class, Jean. I mean, you're personally enough, lass. Bright, clever even. But just no class. How was Hull? Hmm, well, you know what they say about Hull. Well, where's Daisy Eric? I don't know, and I'm worried. She told me this wonderful story, Daisy, about Joe Pig. It was Joe Pig? Well, that was the name of her Coleman when, when she was a little girl. They called him Joe Pig because he, he put his pig on the wall to watch the May Queen procession go by because he thought it was missing something, you see. Anyway, Joe Pig has, had this awesome cart to deliver his coal. And apparently he used to beat this poor old horse to make it go and burst brew. One day he was beating as usual. Suddenly, halfway up the hill, he dropped down dead. He turned to Daisy and he said, well, I've never seen you do that before. <laughs> Mind you, the place is small as Harley. I don't see how you can lose an old woman who can't even walk. We're doing everything we can. And I have enough men out there. She's been talking about her past life. And her one affair during the First World War with Albert, the merchant seaman. A bit like me, Auntie Delia. Mm. Well, last, last year of her life, her mind suddenly went back 60 years. Not a word about her second husband. She'd been married to him for 40 years. He was waiting on her hand and foot. It was all about Harold. He'd been killed in France in 1915. He'd only been married for six months. Suddenly it was Harold this, Harold that. Never mentioned him in 40 years. Suddenly total recall, total living in the past. It must be her past. It's something to do with her past. Some place she shared with Albert in the past. Are you arguing with me? I'm not. Well, it seems like it. I'm trying to tell you the truth. I appreciate it. Relieve me, man. I mean, now that you've got me cornered, I'll, I'll give you a lot. Well, that's good, Jack. Get it off your mind. I mean... I know you lot have always treated me with contempt. Jack Lord, nobody. Biggest crime, stealing sweets from a baby, right? Not me. Well, I wasn't that, see? I was big time. I drove for all the firms. I've known them all, and they've known me. I've known all the big villains, George. Over the years, I've... I've fooled a lot of you. Well, we're just a little worried you're fooling us over this £18,000 Millenhall sub-post office job. All right. So I was... wrong about Alf Harrison. It weren't him. Who was it, then? McArdle. McArdle? John McArdle. The one that did the Wilbilly sub-post office job. How'd you spell his name, this chap who did the Wilbilly sub-post office? Right. <clears throat> Let's talk about this. 